Got a request. There's a happy land and promise over in the great beyond. Thank you. 
Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone out this morning. If we have any visitors, I'd like to welcome uh, y'all as well. Uh, bear with me this morning. Looks like we do have quite a few announcements. Um, next month on August 4th at 6 p.m. here at the church, we're going to have prayer, fasting, and a worship meeting, a time of togetherness before the Lord where we corporately agree to fast the evening meal and spend that time worship, studying the Word, and extended prayer. Everyone is welcome. Let's draw closer to Him. Um, and then on the 6th of that week, uh, we'll have our revival. Brother uh, Junior Garman will be our evangelist. Then on the 12th, we'll have Youth Sunday and Fellowship Lunch. Uh, then uh, the, on the 16th, we'll have the Women's Ministry Meeting. Uh, please see the note below. And then on the 19th, we'll be singing. Night special guest will be Canyons Crossing. And then on the 20th, the Young at Heart uh, group will have their lunch, be serving uh, hot dogs and hamburgers. Uh, let's see. Also, the Young at Heart will have a trip on September 29th to the Homestead Hollow in Springville. They'll have outdoor arts and crafts uh, festival. Uh, look up uh, on the internet if you'd like to get more information. There's also a sign-up sheet in the foyer. And they'll be leaving here at the church at uh, 7 a.m. I've been through Springville a few times uh, at work. That's a, kind of one of those little home, little hometowns there. Everybody knows each other. So uh, I definitely encourage y'all for that. Uh, also, do we have any other announcements? Okay, so it'll be August 22nd. They'll have the dinner for donations. Everybody, please uh, remember that. Pass the word along to everyone else. Um, and, of course, on the 11th, uh, they'll, the youth are going to have a back-to-school bash. Uh, so uh, the details will be coming. So all you kids, get ready. School starts back. Sometimes I wish I could go back to school instead of going to work. <laughs> But uh, at this time, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? I think a lot of people's on vacation this week. At this time, I'll ask everybody if they would please stand. If I could have three men to come forward, we'll take up this morning's offering. Brother John Southard, you asked the blessing this morning. Three, three seventeen, his love lights the way.
go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We have much to pray about. Let's pray for our land and our country. Seems like it waxes worse and worse. We uh, need to pray for our church and our church family. Remember those who aren't here, who couldn't make it. Remember those who are sick. I also remember those who didn't have the want to come this morning. Uh, seemed like there was some of that this morning. But we, most of all, want to thank the good Lord for extending his love and his mercy out to us over this week and bless our hearts and our souls. And we pray he's done the same for you. Do we have any spoken requests before we go to the Lord in prayer this morning? CC. Okay. Amen. Remember that family. Remember my brother Bill. He came home from the hospital. He's doing a lot better. And also remember Roger Ferguson. Roger didn't get a good report. Let's remember Roger. Remember Teddy. Okay. Remember Carol and Wayne. Hold them up. Anyone else? If not, let's all go to the Lord and pray.
we might make a difference in this world. In serving you and in Christ's name we The name of this song is Higher Than I've Ever Been. Do this for Gary. He likes this song. And first song that I learned after I made the commitment to the Lord, and it ain't got old to me yet. Listen to the words of this song. I have heard what's the bird has a broken wing. It will never fly high in.
And I'm going to take that trip one day. If you ain't, there's a place you can. And today's the day to do it. Do what God puts on your heart today, people, and we'll start revival early. You know, I don't know what I'm supposed to say, but he said, say something, and I'm going to say it. Amen. I don't know what it's going to be. I got a good friend that's having a major surgery this Friday, but the one thing he told me is, pray for me, but if I don't make it, I know where I'm headed. I'm in a better place. Can you say that today if it was your surgery? Amen. Amen. Can you? What if God called you home right now? Where would you go? If you can't say you're going to heaven, there's an altar right here that you better Amen. be in. We'll pray for him. We'll pray for him, Lord Gary. When I met the Lord For everything I was looking for I was lost He went the extra mile By His grace Made me His child If I had a dollar If I had a dime If I had more money If I had a dollar, if I had a dime, if I lived in a holler and a mansion fine, no matter how poor or rich you may be, I'd give it all to Jesus what he's done for me. salvation when I met the Lord for everything I was looking for I was lost he went the extra mile by his grace made me his child if I had a dollar
it might be, I'd give it all to Jesus, what he's done for me. Sing. You know, I get to thinking a lot of times where I was at this time last year. If you ever go through anything like that, it'll, you may think you're doing good and everything, but it'll, it'll harm you down. Promise you. of Bob Madison. He passed, it's been a year this past week that he passed away and this was his favorite song. He wanted to hear it every Sunday. I'll be somewhere listening. When the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere. 
Somewhere listening. We uh we hope that uh, when uh, the good Lord is talking to you that you can hear him and that you will listen to his call. Have you ever been somewhere, uh, let's say out of state or in a different city or even in a different country? And he had to find a place to go to church. Hmm. Gary, you've traveled some. Been in a truck and around. I have. Sometimes a hard thing to do, isn't it, Sheila? <laughs> we went off up to West Virginia one time. She went with me. And <laughs> we found one of them snake handling churches. That wasn't quite for us either. But, uh, there, uh, there's things uh, in our life that we take for granted, aren't they? Like our next breath. Mm -hmm. How many of us have made plans for tomorrow? Mm -hmm. See? We take a lot for granted. But ain't none of that going to happen without God blessing us, is it? None of it. Now, we, uh, when we were off out into the world and we finally realized that uh, <laughs> when we want to get something done brother Gary we sought out God we were seeking God to help us now <laughs> when we seek God out to help us things change and they start going to the better don't they now we need to seek God out in our lives today so that he can make them better for us. And he does. When things are wrong and you try to everything you know, <laughs> finally you seek out God. Why didn't you seek him out first? Why don't you have him on hand? We were, we were talking in Sunday school class this morning about the five wise and the five foolish virgins they were all prepared a little bit wasn't they some of them had lamps and they were burning all five all ten of them but as things go on they let things they let the five of them let their lamps go out we don't need to be with them do we we need to be with the five who were prepared brought all with them 
In today's world, we take a lot for granted in our churches, in our Christian lives, that are actually blessings from God. Amen? And we just take them for granted. Now, we're going to go over here next Sunday. We're going to have a Sunday school class. We're going to hear the good singing. And we're going to go to church, and we're going to do our part. And we just take it for granted. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's a blessing of God, isn't it? You know, it's really, truly a blessing to God is to seek him out and find him. Amen. <laughs> you can find him. Can't you, John? You can find God if you'll seek him out. <laughs> and he'll help you. Amen. Hmm. In our church, we have blessings here, don't we? We can actually feel God's Holy Spirit in our hearts and our lives. And in this church, we're truly blessed with God's Spirit. We need to continue. We need to continue to ask God to come be with us. And especially now that we're going to have revival. Amen. Let's reach out to the lost so they might hear His Word. You know, we might be actually saving them from hell fire. That's what the Bible teaches us. Amen. If we can reach out, we might get the Word out. We might be plucking them from, God, from the devil's hell. Seek God first. We need to seek God in our lives. We need to seek Him out first. Sometimes it's the last thing we do. And I'm, I'm guilty. Amen. When things don't go my way, sometimes my old stubborn self, I just keep trying on, Gary. But if I would turn to God and ask for His help in God, things would go better, wouldn't they? Today in our world, we have missionaries who are traveling this world over, working for Christ. They're putting their situations every day of their life. Imagine that. Do you have what it takes? <laughs> There's people in this world who love God so much that they put their life out there every day for it. Amen? Amen. There's, there is an educator in town and also a preacher. His name is Greg Tinker, who went on a missionary journey over into Africa. And I want to tell this for God's glory. And uh, they went over there to help build some buildings so they could train the preachers of that area who had been saved for God. And this is the church of Nazarene doing this. But the disciples and the followers of Christ and today's missionary are not the only ones out in the world trying to get people. Their competition was the Muslim faith. And the Muslims have plenty of money and they would go drill a well for these people. But the only way you could get water is go to their mosque, become a Muslim. And they're drilling lots of wells. Mm-hmm. So, finding that point out, they're trying to get money, to get people to donate money now so that they can drill wells and get people to come to get the water and give them the Word of God. Amen? What they say, come to the well and drink. Who's the living water, huh? Is that not Christ Jesus? Amen? So, there's a lot of things in our life we take for granted, isn't there? But there's still missionary work going on today. We're going to talk to you about a missionary <laughs> in the name of Paul. Uh-huh. And his love for God was great. And he faced things all through his ministry. And if you'll turn with me to the 17th chapter of the book of Acts. And we're not going to read the whole chapter, but we are going to start with the 16th verse. But we're going to give you a little history up until that point. Paul was traveling with Paul and Silas. It was Paul and Silas, and he had a Timotheus who was with him here at this point. And they were going to cities in Greece and along the way as a missionary, and they were preaching and as they were going in these cities, they were having success. 
as normal, Paul always went to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. And when the Jewish people wouldn't listen to him, he would preach to the, the Gentile people. And they were having people saved from the Gentile side of their faith. And, and the, the Jews they would become jealous and they would try to do things to get Paul in trouble and did. They got him beat. They got him stoned. But they didn't get him killed, did they? He didn't quit. Well, according to this 17th verse, some of this had happened. And Paul had went from one city to the next city. And, and quick as the, the Jewish people would find out it was Paul and he was teaching the same message, they would kind of give him problems. It got so bad, they had to get him out here in a ship and send him to Athens. And that's where we're going to start. Here is Paul. He's, he's been shipped out and he's gone to Athens. And uh, he was waiting for Timotheus and Silas to catch up to him. So that's why I asked if you've ever been in a big city. Paul was there in the big city and he didn't know anybody. Have you ever been there? You ever been somewhere you didn't know anybody? Well, Paul was there, wasn't he? So Paul is wandering around in Athens. But yet, God had been in Athens before Paul. And he found some, uh, some people who, who were Jewish and he went to the synagogue. And a matter of fact, he went to it three times. But also, they didn't want to hear him. So he would teach in the public, out on the street, in, in the markets of Athens. Uh-huh. He was devoted to God, wasn't he? And he had time to wait on God, didn't he? Uh, he was waiting on his, his, his other people to get to him, but he wasn't waiting on them and quit preaching to God, has he? So while he was waiting for them to catch up, he was about the Father's business, wasn't he? And so we start. Now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens... His spirit was stirring in him when he saw the city holy given unto idols. Now he's in a foreign city and he's Athens, but he is taken back by what he's seeing. Here is a city, big city. Athens, Greece is a big place. And it seemed like there was a, a temple on every corner and another God on every corner. But there were totally idol gods do you notice that? Hmm? He was taken back by how sinful or how, how they were. So therefore disputed he in the synagogues with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. So he's telling them about Christ, about God. And certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Sokics encountered him and some said, what will this babbler say? Others, he seemeth to be a searcher forth, a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Amen. So there were some people there who in, in Athens uh, who were out and about in the city and, and their purpose was to hear new things. And to search out new gods and to hear about new things so they could either gossip or confound. So Athens was full of different gods and goddesses and statues and, and places to worship these gods. And yet they still weren't satisfied. So Paul and his, his time waiting in Athens had time to travel around the city. And he noticed these things. He noticed there were a lot of different gods, a lot of different temples to worship these gods. But also in his journey around, he found something else, and we're going to get there too. Paul, <laughs> led by the Spirit of God, amen? He had, his, he had his oil in his lamp, didn't he? And it was trimmed and ready, wasn't it? And when, when the cry came at midnight, he was ready for God, wasn't he? So we need to be. Here's, here's Paul in Athens.
And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine wherefore thou speakest is. So the Areopagus was in the middle. It's on Mars Hill. And uh, all the philosophers and the people with a lot of wisdom, we have a lot of them today too, don't we? Huh? People who think they have earthly wisdom. They're smart and they might have three or four doctorates by their name and people put trust in them because they have all this education, right? Well, here's Paul standing to address people like this, amen? They want to hear about this new religion that he is talking about. This new type of a religion that his God furnishes for the world, amen? And if you'll let him be, he'll be your God. Now you've got to let him, but Paul's going to incite this bunch. He's going to enlighten them about his God. Amen. Here's these, these highly educated people, and they're going to try to make fun of Paul and, 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 and things like philosophers do. <laughs> but God's got somebody wise with him. Amen. Woo! <laughs> who's, who's Paul got with him? <laughs> hey! People who give all knowledge. Amen. This God that Paul knew had all knowledge. Amen. From the beginning of time. They couldn't... <laughs> they couldn't separate Paul from his God. Amen. And they couldn't belittle Paul enough not to believe that there was a God. Now, there's always going to be people who don't believe, isn't there? And there's people who don't believe today. And if you got out in the, in the world and tell them about Christ, they're going to make fun of you sometimes. And there's a lot of them that's not going to believe you. Amen? Same in Paul's time. Amen? <laughs> but, <laughs> Paul had some of this awe <laughs> in his lamp. And it was lit by God. That all was the Spirit of God in him. Amen? <laughs> so he's going to tell these wise people something. Well, thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. <laughs> we would know, therefore, what these things mean. Explain to us. Let us know what you're talking about. Uh, have you ever tried to you ever tried to tell the sinner what God would mean to him? How that it would change his life? What does the Bible tell us about God when He comes in our hearts and our life today? When we open up our heart and let Christ in, we become anew. Did you see the 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 brochure this morning for the church? Huh? He makes you a different creature, and that what it says on 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 front. He changes your life. He makes you a different person. You're not the same. You're different. You're new. You're not the old Sam. You're the new Sam with God in your life. Amen. Paul was going to let these people find out about the new people or the new person that they could be with Christ in their life. Amen? <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> Verse 27, uh, 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things Ye are too superstitious. Amen? Uh, I think you're too superstitious. <laughs> He's thinking in his mind, I've walked around this town and I've seen, I've seen temples and I've seen statues and I've seen all sorts of things to a whole bunch of different gods. I think you're just too superstitious about this God. You need to know the God that I have and you can do away with the rest of them. Amen? Amen? But now, now he's going to use it to his, his advantage here is this. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declaring I unto you. <laughs> they thought that they had a lot of gods that they worshiped to, but if they missed one, they were going to have him a place anyway of the unknown God, one they didn't know about, or maybe one that's new that's going to come on the scene. They didn't want him 
to find them not to know him. So they even said, okay, we got gods to a whole bunch of them, but we're going to have one for the unknown, one we don't know about. <laughs> Paul's using this for his attention. He's going to tell them about this unknown God, the God they didn't know about, amen? He's going to try to enlighten them about the God that can save them from a uh, devil's hell, amen? For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, am declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in these temples made with hands. Now this is his God. Neither is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing that he is given to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations, of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined that the times before appointed and the bounds of their inhabitants. Amen. This God's in control, he's telling them. Amen. That they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Amen. For in him we live. Now where are you with this God? Listen to him. For in him we live and we move and have our being. Amen. Come on. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also of his offspring. Amen. Uh-huh. Are we off of God? Who made, who made the first man? Who breathed the breath of life into the first man? God did. Amen. So his spirit, his part, our souls, amen, is from God. This unknown God that these people didn't know. Here's Paul going to tell them who he is. Amen. amen. Who? Wouldn't you like to be Paul's place? Amen. Here's Paul and he's trying to teach these people who this God really is. He's a God of love. He's the God that lives with you. He's in your heart, your life. You can take him with you. He don't ever leave where he's not. Amen. This God's alive and he's in your heart and he's not far from any of us. Amen. Ooh, not far from us, amen, he's close. <laughs> For as much then <laughs> as we are offsprings of God, we ought not think that the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device, amen. Now, here we go. <laughs> Uh huh. How many times throughout the history of the Bible we read about how man fashioned up a God out of silver or gold or chiseled him out of stone and put him in places for people to fall down and worship him? Amen. How many times we read all through the Bible? Amen. Of even even when when Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach was in bondage over there, that old king made him a, a symbol, a, a god, amen. And when they heard all sorts of music and heard the symbols and things that they were to bow down and pray to him, amen, he made a god, but he was a dead god. He wasn't alive. That's the god that Paul's talking about. Paul's god's alive, and Paul knew it, amen. And he's trying to explain to the people here, you can have a god that lives who is not a statue. He's not a piece of gold. He's not silver, but he's alive and he lives in you if you'll let him. Amen. amen. Woo! That's God's alive in my life and I can feel him and I can know him and I can understand when he's working with me. Amen. Can you? You can this day if you'll let him in your heart and your life. Amen. Woo! <laughs> Paul's God was alive. He wasn't a piece of gold or silver. Or a piece of granite, hard and cold. He's alive and well. And he dwells with his children. Woo! <laughs> Paul's talking to the smart people of the world of the time. This place is 
<laughs> kind of be like our Google today, Peggy. Huh? He was talking to the wise people of the world. Maybe we need to get on, <laughs> on Google and tell them about our God. Amen. How far you think that'd get? How many comments you think you'd get real quick from the atheist, huh? Uh-huh. Come on. <laughs> but Paul didn't let this. <laughs> he didn't let this slow him up, did he? He wanted him to know his God. You want God to know your God? <laughs> I'm going to slow up just a minute and let you play my song. <sighs> I want you to listen to the song and see the words and seek out God. Paul was teaching the smart people of the world of his time about a God. If they would seek him out, how he would, they would find him. <laughs> Amen. And he wasn't far from any of them. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. You need to seek him out. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Yeah. And seek you. Got to seek him what? First. He's not going to be second. He's going to be first. this God so he can come into your heart and your life are you going to seek him out you got to seek him first he's not going to be second thank you Lord We continue to serve first. You think Paul was putting God first?
think Paul was seeking God first? What did he do? First thing he did when he entered into the place was go to the uh, where the Jews met. To each and every time he went to the Jews first. He'd go to the synagogue if they had one. If they didn't have a synagogue, he went to the Jewish people first. He gave them an opportunity to know this new, this new salvation of the world that most people at that time didn't know. Amen. So he put God first in his heart and his life. Amen. Now Paul was <laughs> Paul was smart because God was with him. Amen. God has the wisdom of all. Even though Paul was a smart fellow to start with, wasn't he? He'd been educated, highly educated in the Jewish law and the Jewish belief, amen, from an early age. Now Paul didn't begin with these people with great big formulas and memorizing things to try to impress them, did he? He offered no words of condemnations of their God at this time. Mm-hmm. He didn't tell the people they were wrong for their beliefs. He didn't begin by calling them false gods, even though they were. Brother Paul began with where his listeners were spiritual. He says he began their idol. He acknowledged that they were religious and spiritual people, and they had many idols to various deities. He then turned his focus on their unknown God. He said, I found also an unknown altar with this inspiration to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, I proclaim to you as Lord God and Savior of all. Amen. <laughs> so Paul is in Athens as we know it. He's explaining to the people of Athens about his new religion, about how God has sent his son into the world to suffer and bleed and die for our sins, that through his shed blood, they might be saved. Amen. And this was totally new. And the people had heard about it from Paul's teaching in the synagogues there in Athens and in the streets as he preached to the, the common person, me and you, there. And he was getting people to believe him and when they heard, they wanted to hear this new thing. They wanted to see if they could believe about this new God or this new religion or this new way to serve. And it got their curiosity, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So all these rich and knowledgeable guys said, well, let's just get old Paul and drag him up here and let him talk to us about this God that he knows. So they did, didn't they? So Paul is here telling them about his God. But what they didn't understand <laughs> is Paul was just the spokesman. This God had all power that he's fixing to tell them about. He might have been unknown to them, but he's not unknown to Paul or to the world who knew him, is he? Amen. God is God and he is love and he has all power. And he was not a stranger to Paul or Silas. Amen. Paul had seen his actions. Paul had been locked in prison and he'd seen the prison shake and the chains fall off of him. The doors of the prison cells fly open because of the power of God. Because he knew God. He loved this God and he was willing to die for this God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> This unknown God that these Greeks didn't know, amen, was not unknown to Paul, amen. Paul knew him. So Paul's term says, well, <coughs> excuse me, this God I know, he's not made out of <laughs> he's not made out of gold. He's not made out of silver. He's not carved in granite or marble, but he's alive, amen. Listen to Paul here now. Paul knows this God, and he knows he's alive. <laughs> verse 30. Listen to this. We've all heard this verse. At the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Where do we fall today? Where to repent. Amen. Amen. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, 
some mocked. Others said, we will hear thee again on this matter. So Paul departed from them. How be it? Certain men clave unto him and believed. Among the which was Delomidius and an Arthipogite and the woman named Demetrius and others with them. So Paul's words didn't go out void. God's word don't go out void, does it? Even though some of them says they scoffed at him, they laughed at him when he said this God rose again from the dead. They didn't believe. Others says, well, we want to hear you again on this matter. But some believed. Amen. Where are you? Huh? Where do you stand? Are you a believer of Christ? Do you believe what Paul was teaching here? You better be. Amen. We better be where Paul was and, and how he was in his belief. Paul began where the listeners were spiritual. And he began with their idols. And he acknowledged that they were religious spiritual people. And had many idols and many deeds. He turned his focus there unto the unknown God. He said, I found an altar with that inscription. Now, let's pause for a moment. Some of the translations say in this worship of ignorance, <laughs> in the English could sound like a condemnation. However, Paul is not calling them stupid or foolish, but simply affirming that they do not know that they are ignorant of this God. Amen. Hence their designation to the unknown God. Sometimes in our life, I think people in this world are ignorant of our God. They don't know Him. They don't know of Him. They haven't been taught about Him. Amen. Where would you be if you hadn't heard some preacher? Or if you hadn't been to a church somewhere to hear God's Word? Amen. Today, not so much as when I was younger because you could stood on the courthouse square on Saturdays and heard the message of God. You couldn't today, could you? Huh? So we had, we grew up in a different time. But people today are totally ignorant of God, some of them. They've never read the Bible. They've never been taught the Word of God. They don't know this God. This God's unknown God to them today. Amen. You have an opportunity to be Paul today. Amen. You have the opportunity to tell the world about this unknown God. Do you take your work seriously? Amen. Paul took his work seriously for God. Amen. He, he was so serious he would give him his life and did. Amen. For God, this unknown God to the world, amen. Don't you want to know this God? Don't you want to know this God that Paul knew? He was trying to teach the people in Athens about this unknown God, the God that they didn't know, amen. <laughs> you think all the gods they knew did them any good? <laughs> huh? Don't you think Paul could have scoffed at their gods? Huh? <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. They were made out of stone or gold or silver, but they had no power. They just had people who believed that they had power. This God that Paul was talking about had power. Amen? Has strength to change your heart. Has power to change the world. Has power to to heal the body. He has power to have your heart change from that of a sinner to one who is saved. Amen. Turn your heart of, of black to a heart of light. Amen. He can trim your lamp and light, fill it full of oil and light it so the world can see where you belong, which you belong to, that your light is burning. As Christians, we need this lamp on fire, don't we? To show the world where we live. Paul, light or his lamp was bright, wasn't he? People had no problems of finding out where Paul stood. Matter of fact, most of the people didn't like to hear what Paul had because it made them think where they stood. People didn't like to be told that they were wrong for serving their God. Amen. But they need to serve the God that Paul knew. Now Paul 
was a man of God who seek out a place to preach. And he wasn't satisfied. Do you, do, if you look back to the 16th verse, says, Now while Paul waited on them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. What stirred in his heart? God stirred his heart, didn't he? God stirred his heart when he looked out there and he saw all these people who have been deceived by other gods. It, it, it grieved his heart. It stirred his heart so that he wanted to get out there and tell them about this God that he knows. The God that Paul knows is alive and well and he can change people and Paul wanted him to change people, didn't he? So Paul's message was to the world. And to anybody who would hear him, even to Mars Hill. Now you've got you've got to picture this. Mars Hill at the time was the probably one of the most important places in Greece. That's where all the philosophers they even went there to have trials and stuff for their country. So he was in a setting where that he could reach out to all the people of Athens, whether they were high or low, or I got that backwards, high or low, but he could reach out to them. Do you think God put him in that situation for a purpose? Uh-huh. I do, don't you? I think God put him there for a purpose so that he could get his message to a lost and dying world. Even though they didn't all believe some, amen, some did, amen. Some believed, amen. Today in this world, some still believe, amen. It's our duty to put God's word out there, amen, so some can believe, amen. Are you ready to do that? We need to put the word out there more today so more can believe, amen. Do you believe? Do you believe enough? To sacrifice some of your time to get out to the world, to invite them to the church? Do you believe enough to get on your knees and pray? Do you believe that God has enough power to help us if we'll put Him first? Paul believed that. Amen? In turn, God blessed him, didn't He? God heard his prayers and gave him power with him. Paul didn't only stop in Athens. He went all the way to Rome. Amen. Even though he was beheaded, he got to talk to the people from low to high through all the known history of his time. Amen. Paul was an ambassador for God in a time when the world didn't know about God much. But through Paul, his missionary work he helped change the world. Amen. Don't you want to be involved with this God and change the world? I do. I think we need to be involved with Him every day, Gary. I believe that He can visit with us each and every day through our prayers and our love and our meditation, our Bible study to Him. Amen. <laughs> How often... Do we cut him short? How often when he says do this, we do it? If we don't, we're going to answer for it. Come on. Paul loved for God. <laughs> Outweighed anything in Paul's life. Are you there yet? Paul's love for God was beyond anything in his life. It's first. How are we taught in our life? God, family, and then country. Huh? How many of us practice that? Mm. Paul was a man that God chose. Didn't he? Bible teaches he was a chosen vessel to help spread God's word. After Christ, he probably did as much as any person that God had working for him. 
Apostle Paul. If I can persuade you this day, I don't want you to be like the people of Athens and have an unknown God in your life. I want you to know the Paul, I want you to know Paul's God. I want you to know the God of life. Amen. Whether you know it or not, that other God, those other gods, if they're not of God, they're of whom? The devil. I want you to know the true God. The God that makes a difference. Amen. The God who loves you and is preparing a place for you. And it's in heaven. Amen. And he says, if I go away, I will return. He's coming back for those who are prepared. Like we read about in the Sunday school lesson this morning. He loves you. Period. All of us. There's no difference. He loves us all. Amen. He might not like your ways if you don't know him. But he loves your soul. Amen. Because it was a part of him. He breathed life into us. Amen. Don't you want to be like Paul? And know Paul's God. If you're serving any other God today, it's not the right one. Amen. Paul's God is the only one. And there's a lot of people today been deceived about things of this earth, whether it's riches or if it's power or if it's just an easy going church. Well, I like to go there because I can do anything I want. Amen. That ain't going to get you to heaven, people. We need to serve the God of Paul, the unknown God that Paul was talking about. He wants you to know him so he's not the unknown God anymore. I think today's world is more like the world that Paul was in Let's think about the number of idols that are in our world. <laughs> you ever been to Tuscaloosa, to the football stadium, huh? Walk in front, see all the idols, huh? You think there's some people who are distracted enough by that to let that separate them from God? I truly do. I do. Let's, let's go to Sunday at all the pro football teams, right? Huh? They talk about tailgating and all the things that they do on Sunday. Think God's pleased with that? Don't you think they're letting that type of God separate them from the true God? They don't know the true God. He is unknown to them because they're serving the devil. Amen? And the devil has them blinded and he's telling them, well, this is the God you need to serve. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever been blinded by the devil? <laughs> I think we all have. Does he always draw a pretty picture when he's trying to get you to do something? Huh? He don't ever tell you it's going to kill you or take you to hell, does he? Huh? The devil ever told you that if you, if you keep doing drinking or if you keep doing drugs long enough, they're going to kill you? Huh? He don't tell you that, does he? He just tells you to start with how wonderful you're going to feel. He don't tell you that it's going to take your life, maybe your family's life, maybe... Maybe things that you didn't want to happen is going to happen because you're away from God. You don't know this God. He's an unknown God to you. You need to know Him, amen. And you need to search Him out. You need to seek Him. And you need to find Him. And you need to search for Him now, first and foremost in your life. Amen. Do you know this God? Do you really know Him? Can you let Him in? Sure you can. The devil's going to tell you, well, you've done too much. He can't save you, but the devil's a liar. Come to God. Come to God with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and he'll come into your heart and your life. You need to believe that he sent his son to suffer, bleed, and die for our sins. And through his shed blood, he is for, he's forgiven us of our sins. If we'll believe that he suffered, bled, and died for our sins and rose the third day, we can be saved. Amen. Don't you want to know this God? This is the God that Paul's talking about, amen? 
This is the God that has power. Amen. This is the God that gives you joy in your life. This is the God who lets you know that it's good to serve him. Amen. This is the God that blesses you in your life. This is the God that you can know and can help you in your heart, your life each and every day. Amen. He can take you places where you can't go any other way. He can fill you up with his spirit and move you from this world for a time. Amen. You can have him in your heart and your life. You can have this God. You can have him in your life each and every day. You can have him help you. Amen. He wants to be where you are. Bible teaches us here. Paul said he's not far from you. And if you've gotten away from him, you've left him. But he's still close. He's not where you can't find him, Brother Gary. He's close. Let him in. Amen. Don't you want to let God in your heart and your life? We need him today more than ever before. Our world is filled with other gods. Amen. Our world is filled with other gods. And they're all of the devil. Amen. Every one of them is trying to separate you from God. This real God. This God that Paul knew. This unknown God to the people of Athens. Amen. But he can be a known God to you. Amen. You can know this God this day. Don't you want to know him? Don't you want this God in your heart and your life? <laughs> Paul reached out to these people. Some scoffed him. Some said, we'll get you to talk to us again. <laughs> Some believed. Amen. Later on in Paul's ministry, he's going to be carried back to Jerusalem. And he's going to stand before kings. And he's going to preach before kings. And they're going to say, Paul, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Paul, you almost persuaded me. You need to do more than be almost persuaded. Amen. You need to know this God that Paul knows. Amen. This Paul that reigned in uh, this God that reigned in Paul's life is the God of heaven and earth. Amen. Didn't Paul tell him that? Didn't Paul tell him he was the God of heaven and earth and that we could walk in him? Amen. And we could talk in Him. And He was in us. And we could be. And He's not far from us. Amen. We don't have to worry about Him being afar off where He can't get in touch with Him. He's close, Brother Gary. And if you want Him in your heart and your life, He's close. He's as close as you become it humble enough to let Him in. Amen. If He's knocking today, let Him in. Brother Paul Young gives a song. Don't you want to know this God that Paul knew? He changed Paul's life. And when he changed his life, he changed his name. He went from Saul of Tarsus to Paul. Amen. Because he was so mean as Saul of Tarsus, he needed to be new. But God makes you new. God will make you new. He'll forget all that stuff you've done in your past. It's as far from you as the east is from the west. It's never going to show up again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We need you today. If you don't know him, just to open up your heart and let him in. Could we stand? If he's knocking at your heart, let him in today. Give him the opportunity to come into your heart. Let him in. Amen. Know the God that the people in Athens didn't know. The Athenians didn't know this God. Page 373. But Paul enlightened them about him. Amen. Face me not, O yellow <laughs> song was saying, well, seek him out first. Now's your opportunity to seek God out. If he's knocking at your heart and your door, open up and let him in. Amen.
We thank you for your kind attention. And I want you to know this God that Paul knew. This God that Paul was talking to people in Athens about. We need him today in our hearts and our life. Amen. He don't need to be an unknown God to us. We need to know him. Amen. Any announcements?